almost got to 700 boxes, believe it or not. So the goal this year is over 700. There's still time to make donations if you'd like to, either with cash or with things that would be appropriate for children in those boxes. These go all over the world. This is part of Franklin Brown's Mystery Through Samaritan's Purse, Operation Christmas Child. The, um, the Christmas jazz concert that we have done the last few years, Brad has graciously agreed to organize that again, and the date is going to be December 23rd. So you'll be receiving a lot more information about that. But we're going to make sure the house is packed, okay? We have extra chairs over in Fellowship Hall, and we'll bring them in. Last year, we had a really incredible gate. Uh, we had every seat full built. And this year, it's going to be extremely special for us because this was the uh, four of us called the Over the Hill Combo when we went to college together. And the four of us haven't played together since. Oh, my. And you're still friends. Okay. <laughs> well, I think it's going to be special, and uh, we look forward to promoting it. Uh, we had such a wonderful time. It was last year, wasn't it? Or two years ago? Well, two years ago now. Yeah, two years ago now. Nobody was meeting two years ago, or last year. So we're going to have a, a really good time celebrating that COVID is over, or at least under control. And um, we'll be able to sing, sing along with one or two of the songs. Mm -hmm. Great. Maybe three or four. Okay, super. There's no best to sing, I guess. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what we came here to do today, folks? It's worship God and praise our Savior. So if you would please join me in a call of worship. It's printed in Bolton. It's based on Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it in labor build it labor in vain. Well, unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest. We shall put our trust in the Lord who gives rest to God's beloved. Let us worship God. Our first hymn is hymn number 788. Now thank we all our God. <laughs>
Please be with Please be with you, Jimmy. Please be with you. Please be with you. And now it's up with you. Please be Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Good to see you. Hello. Peace be with you.
Merciful God of compassion and justice, take pity on us as we confess our sin. We are not the stewards Christ called us to be. Riches possess us while others go hungry. We mismanage creation with our pollution and strife. Your goodness is betrayed by our lust for power. We abuse your provision for us by our selfish desires. Help us hear once again Christ's call to be faithful. And through him, forgive us as we repent of our sin and turn from it. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Because of the completed work on Jesus Christ on the cross, our sins have been forgiven, made in full. I declare to you in the name of Jesus, we are born children. Amen. And now I ask you to join me, please, if we will stand and Read together the affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to the judge, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Please remain standing and join in singing in remembrance. You will find that on page 461. <laughs>
during the COVID time, we had decided to take up offerings at the back of the church in our plate by mail, 1844 Hype Luxo Road in Montana, 33462, or you can gather by the church office. Those are all meaningful ways to make sure that grace is vital and, and relevant here in our community. So thank you. And now I'd like to lead us in the doxology. reading this passage from the New International Version of the Bible, 1 Corinthians 11, chapter, chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. For I have received what I was also passed to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Whenever you drink it in remembrance of me, and whenever you drink it, you do so in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of Jesus until he comes. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Links between the Jewish Passover and the Lord's Supper are obvious. Both are celebrations. Celebrations of deliverance and occasions of remembrance. The writer of the Exodus narrates one of the most dramatic events in the history of the Israelites. God heard the cries of the Israelites in Egypt and he prepared to fulfill his promise, his covenant to return Israel to the promised land. God speaking through Moses and Aaron, demanded Pharaoh, let my people go. But Pharaoh defiantly denied obeying God. Crossing the Red Sea was the greatest display of God's power in the Old Testament and also an event that would be forever etched in the minds of the Israelites. For Christians, the Lord's Supper is a celebration of salvation. Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper for two basic reasons. First, he wanted this meal to remind the believers of the redemptive work he did on the cross for humankind. This was work we could have never achieved for ourselves. And secondly, he wanted this meal to be used to proclaim his death until he Unlike any other previous Passover, this time Jesus' body, the spotless and unblemished Lamb of God, would replace the traditional Passover lambs. Just as God liberated the Israelites from 400 years of slavery in Egypt and formed a covenant with them. The blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross at Calvary, recorded in the New Testament, releases captives from sin and death and from their spiritual bondage and established a new covenant of Grace with believers in Jesus Christ. In his commentary on the Lord's Supper, Max Anders tells us that Paul admonished the Corinthians concerning the Lord's Supper. This congregation 
had turned this celebration inside out by using it as an opportunity to divide and to abuse each other. I remember hearing a minister speak on this subject and he said, before we allow ourselves to be too hard on the Corinthian congregation, you might want to look to the left and to the right or look at that in your mind and you might see yourself sitting in that congregation. According to him also, he said, the Corinthian congregation had become so, had so twisted the celebration of the Lord's Supper that in reality, it did not look like the Lord's Supper at all. And to correct this problem, Paul applied the principles which he strongly believed relates to worship and he said this, when we gather for worship, our focus should be on God. God is the reason why we worship. And praise is due to him for the atonement made on the cross on our behalf. Praise is the purest form of communication to express what God has done in our lives. Secondly, we should not be divided. There should be no cliques. There should be no, nothing to divide us as people of God. And thirdly, this pattern should be the way the church gives testimony to the world for who we are. Someone has said, I'd rather see a sermon any day than to hear one. Paul insisted that the Lord's Supper at Corinth no longer met the criteria that had been established by God, by Jesus Christ. He then went on to outline the central focus of the Lord's Supper, and we read that in 1 Corinthians 11, 23. I read that earlier on. This is in remembrance and proclamation of Jesus' saving work. Remembering this should have led the Corinthian congregation to be able to correct what was wrong. It should also serve the same purpose for us. In essence, Paul said he was passing on to them what had been given to him. Interestingly enough, biblical scholarship does not tell us where, when, or by whom Paul was given this information. But one thing we know for sure is that he went on to demonstrate the proper way that we must observe the Lord's Supper. He did this by recounting how Jesus himself did on the night that he was betrayed. And in recounting what Jesus did, Paul began by saying, For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. When the world sees the church at worship and observes that we are eating and drinking the body, and blood of Jesus in an orderly fashion. When we show respect for each other and practice what we preach, the word of scripture becomes visible. We are family. 
and Paul refers to the church in I mean, 1 Corinthians 12 as the body of Christ. The expression, the Lord's death represents the whole of Christ's saving ministry on behalf of the church of himself, his death and resurrection and ascension. In our denomination, we acknowledge the Lord's Supper and baptism as the two sacraments ordained by Jesus Christ. The Lord's Supper is also known by other names, Holy Communion, the breaking of freedom, the last of supper, and you have heard it referred to also as Eucharist and Mass. As I alluded to at the outset of my message today, the Lord's Supper has its roots in the Jewish Passover meal. Paul's intent then and now was that it was to teach Christians to understand that they are one body, one body, the body of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 11, 24, we read, do this, Jesus said, in remembrance of me. And in a lot of churches, you will see that written on the Lord's table. I think I saw that either written on the linen or on the table here. Jesus knows our nature better than we do. And God knows that we have a short attention span. I digress to share with you one of my favorite uh, Bible uh, references. And it came to me as I was preparing my message. It's from Psalm 139. Oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. Before a word is formed on my tongue, you know it all together. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Where can I go from your presence? Where can I flee from your presence? For you created me in my mother's womb and knit me together there. I praise you, Lord, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. As I thought about that, I thought about how quickly the Israelites forgot what God had done for them and how soon they were engaged in making complaints to Moses, claiming that he had brought them out in the wilderness to die and that perhaps they would have been better off had they stayed in Egypt. Some of us here this morning may be thoroughly familiar with the reference to senior moments. <laughs> that is, you forget, you go to the refrigerator to get something out, but you don't know if you intended to put something in. And unfortunately, some of us have relatives or friends who have been diagnosed with dementia. And we mourn for them because dementia is serious. It robs a person of everything. And not to be able to remember anything is really, really sad. I conclude our message today with Three points I'd like for you to take away. First of all, when we partake of the elements of the Lord, 
supper, bread, and wine. We are to joyfully celebrate and proclaim the atoning death of Jesus for our salvation. Secondly, we should learn to appreciate more fully the amazing love of God and the amazing grace of God. And third, welcome the ongoing presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Beloved of Christ, we should be intentional about partaking the Lord's Supper with a good frame of reference. And remember the words of Paul in 1126. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the wine, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Christ until he comes. Amen. This is the Lord's table. We have come here by invitation, his invitation. As Paul said, on the night of Jesus' arrest, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Do this in remembrance of me. And he took the cup and he poured the wine and he said, this is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. As often as you eat the bread and drink the wine, you proclaim the saving death of Jesus until he Take of the elements of bread and wine. The bread represents the body of Christ given to you. The wine represents his blood shed for the forgiveness of sin. Eat the bread. The bread representing also manna that he gave to the Israelites in the wilderness. And his blood shed once and for all for our sins. Join me please in singing our closing hymn, I am thine, O Lord.
and to you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.